Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I am here with yet another Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be going over a regular banner that you'd put in an info channel, in your announcements, updates, etc. And this design is also a bit different from the other ones you've probably seen on the channel, as in there's nothing coming out of the frame, it's all contained within that same singular frame that everything else is going to be in. So it's different in that regard, but it's really applicable to a wide variety of communities. It doesn't necessarily stick to the anime theme of the channel, but that's fine. You're here to learn or to just grab a template, which is fine as well. So to start out, we're going to go to Create New, and we're going to go at about 1000 by 200. This is all in pixels. Click Create. And we have our initial frame right here. Next, we're going to get rid of this background by hitting a new layer down here. Go into background, click and delete. Now we're on our regular frame right here. The next step is going to involve us making our initial background frame. So to do that, we're going to be using two different colors. This first color is going to be 00D6FA. And then the second color is going to be this one right here, which is, oops, I'm sorry. There we go, 1B, 1B, 1B. And then from here, we're gonna grab our rectangular marquee tool. I'm sorry, rounded rectangle tool, getting these two mixed up. And we're just gonna drag across, and it doesn't really matter what size you make it right now, because you're gonna be resizing that in just a moment with more details. So for the curve on the edges, you're going to want 29 pixels. You can play around with that for a bit if you want to, 30, 26, 27, but 29, 30 is definitely the best option for this. And for the size of this, you're going to want to go at 900 by 115. And this will be our entire size, as in everything from here is going to be contained within this little black area. Okay, cool. So next step is we're going to just make a quick new layer. And we aren't going to touch this too much just yet. And I'm going to make a blue just to keep it at the forefront of our minds. I'm going to drag this across. We're going to want to make this at 19. Don't want to stroke. We're just going to make this bright red, and this is definitely going to change. It's going to be a dark grayish, blackish later on, but for now, red so we can see what we're doing. Otherwise, it would be the same color as this background, and we have no idea where it was. So for the width, we're going to want to make it at 866 by 75 pixels. That's perfect, and we're going to want to center it right in between here. Perfect, so that's completely centered, and we can now hide this layer because we won't be using it for a little bit. I'm just going to quickly group this up, and we're going to name this the top layer. And let's make this red just to match everything else. In the bottom, we'll name this the backgrounds layer, and we can call this the base, and we'll make this green to help it stand out a little bit. Cool. So the next step is actually swap this color to blue. This should have been blue, and it's pretty easy to do. You just go over your properties and swap the blue. And if properties isn't showing up for you, you're going to want to go to Window, and you're going to click Properties right from the Window spot, and Properties is going to pop up, and you might have to drag it over to this right side over here or position it somewhere else, however you prefer. But that's how you get Properties and all these other tools to pop up as you need them. So now we have our base layer right here. The next step is we're going to cut across kind of diagonally to make a trapezoid, upside down trapezoid. There we go. And for the trapezoid, we're going to be wanting to use this dark shape. And let's say we do it. I'm going to show that real quick just so I get an idea of what I'm doing. Click there. This is the pen tool, so click there. Click there, click there, click there, and it's actually a bit too much, so click here, 
do here. There we go. That's perfect. And I'm only going to go about to the center because if I kept on going all the way here, it would definitely end up being unproportionate and that's not the goal here. Now we're going to do is right click, make selection, hit OK, Shift F5, fill is going to pop up. If color is selected, make sure you select it again by dropping the little box and then popping it up. And make sure you go over here and select the start color from earlier, which is 1B, 1B, 1B. Hit OK, hit OK. Go to your rectangular marquee tool, right click, deselect. That is perfect. Now, as you can see, this is a little wonky, but that is perfectly fine. We can grab our rectangular marquee tool, go across, and when you see this guiding line pop up, or if you don't have that, you can zoom in and see where it lines up with the blue. Just click delete. Do the same thing at the bottom. Go over till you hit the blue and click delete. That's there. So we're going to do control J, control T, go over to the width, and we're going to stick a negative sign in front of it. Drag this over. And you should align it to about where it would be at the ends. There we go. So I selected both of them and it adjusted it to match up perfectly on both sides. Perfect. Great. Now we can merge these two layers and we can name this the black drop down. Oops. Caps lock. Enter. And from here, we're going to do a couple of things with this layer. We're going to go to blending options. We're going to do a is pattern overlay going to show up. Yep, it will. Do a pattern overlay. We're going to do a inner shadow. And the inner shadow is to give it the appearance of this blue part dropping down onto this black part. And if it doesn't show up well here, always uncheck global light unless you're doing something that requires it. Give me one second to find the proper settings for this. Okay, after some tinkering that isn't going to work out, so just leave it at pattern overlay. And the way to get these line patterns is you can simply Google Photoshop blind patterns and then download the file. Make sure you're downloading from a safe source. Open up the file and it's going to automatically load into your Photoshop. I recommend already having Photoshop open when you open the file so it loads in quicker. Cool. So I'm going to do instead is I'm going to have this drop shadow down to zero degrees. So it should drop down this way because I don't want the drop shadow going to the outside here. That is not the intention. Okay, so let's go to the base. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have this drop to the right just to see if this is going to work. There we go. Then let's put the distance out to around. Oh, wrong way. Okay, it was 180 then, my bad. Distance out to around, no, it would help if I had it on top. What we might actually have to do is cut out the base and then do it over because otherwise it's hiding underneath this part. So it's not gonna show up as intended. Give me one minute to try it out to see if it works. Cool, so it works well. Let me show you how to do it. First off, if you got this drop shadow part, right click, clear layer style, then right click, rasterize layer, then hold control and click the little thumbnail right here of the black drop down, then click delete. And now if you take a look, these are completely separate layers from each other, each separate entities that rely on each other now to make this whole complete picture. Now to kind of fix this part here now, we're going to grab the pen tool. We're going to go over to the back, actually drag the base to the top first. 
and you're gonna grab where is that pencil tool and just go across the top just like so I agree it's not the cleanest method but it's quick and it's efficient and gets what we need done so go across just like so and then one more time right up here perfect now we can apply our drop shadow to this top layer and what I'm going to be doing is 64 25 at an angle of 180 degrees and if you notice I'm going to create a quick backdrop so you can see what's going on here let's do green there is now a dark shadow along the outside of this image and we do not want that at all so what we're going to do here is actually let me separate this out as well because this I forgot exists let's actually clear that real quick and separate these two so we're going to do control J and over here we're going to do delete and now we'll name this the right blue and left blue cool so we're going to do paste layer style clear layer oh, sorry rasterize layer style and we we'll grab our marquee tool and go over the top and just bring that down and delete the only place that there should be a shadow is going off to the right if you really want to you can come up here and clean this out a little bit as well it's up to you it might be better to grab the pen tool and go along the outside just like so but it's really up to you if you want to bother with that it's not going to show up but for the sake of cleanliness, we'll go ahead and clear that out. And then we're going to do the right side now, because we just the left side. So go over to the right, paste layer style. We'll go to the blending options, go to your drop shadow, and instead 180, put 0. Then right click, rasterize layer style. Go over to the bottom and delete all of that nonsense. That is unnecessary and very dirty. Perfect. And now we have just about our back frame done, except for a few little extras right now. So I might apply some textures we'll see in a bit. First off, let's go ahead and group this up and name this the blue stuff. And so we have black drop down. We don't need this anymore. Get rid of that. And let's go. So what we're going to want to do is make a rhombus. I think it's called a rhombus. I got my shapes right. I haven't done shapes in a long time now. So I'm going to click here. And you want to fill up most of the space here. So click there. Click here. Let's go down to about here. Click here and go like that and that should be fine yeah okay make selection shift f5 and you can do the same color as before and I might actually increase the size of this a little bit it's not good to do it after already making it but it's fine for this cool and then drag this down a little bit all right, and we're going to do a few adjustments from here just to help it stay in to fit in a bit better. So what you're going to want to have to do is have an overlay over this. So we're going to move this down and put overlay and then we're going to do a inner shadow. And we're going to adjust this so it looks as if this is being cut into. Sort of like that. I'm going to position one here and then one right over here. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. So we have two up there. Let's go ahead and group these and name these the rhombi. And name this the top. 
top. Grab these, move them down here. And these will be the bottom. One, two, three. Rom by left, and then Rom by, of course, right. Control T, swap the width, drag this over, and that's just about perfect. And then from here, we're going to do a few textures on these outside spots just to make them look a little less bland. All right, I've got a few things open that we can go ahead and try out. So the first one is the dots. We can go bring this over and see how that's going to look. Control T. Bring it down. Oh, this is for the right side. Let's bring it down a bit further. Right about here. And maybe a little bit smaller from here. That should be fine. Let's try that out. Clipping mask. And let's put this as an overlay. I don't know how I feel about this. Let's leave it for now. And we'll try another thing and see how they blend together. If they don't blend well, well, it's not a problem to cut it out. There we go. Let's do a clipping mask once again. We'll put it at overlay. Maybe soft light. No, it's not working fine. Let's do... Hmm... Try linear burn. Cool. That doesn't look too bad. Okay, let's try it on the other side now. So let's go ahead and control J and bring this all over. Perfect. So we can leave that it is for now. We might be able to try a few other things, but that should work for the moment. I'll come back to it later, I think, if an idea pops up. So now let's go to our top layer. This layer is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to be doing a few minor things with it. So first off with this rounded rectangle back here, we're going to be doing instead to be, to be, to be. You can see it's similar color to this other one, but not quite. And if it's gonna work properly, I wanna do an inner shadow for this one to kind of finish this whole look off. Let's see if we can get it to work. Up the opacity. Oh, I think it's working. Choke a little bit. Always takes a good amount of effort to get these two where you want them. Okay, I actually like that because now it looks like this is all cutting in. Yeah, and this blue part is at the very top of everything. Sweet. Okay, so the next part is you're going to add in the text real quick. And then we're going to add in two blue lines on the top and the bottom. Now I do want to mention, don't feel like you can't swap out colors. Absolutely swap colors if you don't like them or you think something else might fit better. Blue is just the example text, you could say. So this is the base. New layer. And we'll call this lorem ipsum. Perfect. Now 
we can call it server info let's go to character and make this all caps see how this font fits first before we swatch well before we swap fonts wow English is not working for me today when I got out of bed my ability to speak stayed in bed there we go server info I'm, I don't hate this font it looks pretty decent actually and this is the font up here it's called China cat you should be able to just google it and you'll find a download for it no biggie I might try to increase the spacing between letters a little bit the height I might come back to in a moment but first let me add this blue section so for the blue it's going to be the same exact thing as all the others 00d6fa and the way we're going to do it is we're going to have it kind of come down a tad bit so starting off at about here I think we can do this that and then have this run the length of server info no no we'll, we'll stop here and then we'll put it up and we'll go across let's do make selection because we'll just copy paste it over to make sure we're getting the same exact spacing on both sides there we go that's here let's actually move this up a little bit and of course this part that's sticking out is going to get chopped off and we're going to do control J control T width negative check mark attach this to the other side and we're going to no space in the middle right yep merge down and then make sure it is centered cool Photoshop says that's centered so I'll take its word for it so control J control T flip it around bring it to the bottom there we go and now we can add our text back and that is perfect text isn't centered now it is fantastic so I'm gonna come back to the outside layer right now and make a few adjustments there but this center section is now completely done as you can see this is pretty simple I will name this the bottom blue I think that's the bottom yeah that has to be the bottom and top blue and actually go ahead and group all these and name this the background section just so if we come back and have to change the default text, it's right up here at the top and there's nothing else cluttering up this space. Come back to our backgrounds and the ROM by left, I actually want to make a few adjustments to. So I actually want to make this move a bit closer. I want to get rid of the ROM by right because we're going to be duplicating this over. Move this a bit closer. Nope, not up. Closer together and a bit closer to this end here. And then for the bottom, we're going to do something similar. I actually don't really like these wrong by either. They look really off, don't they? Copy layer style, clear layer style. I did something very strange with them. But this should be able to fix it. Let's see if this is going to work. Control J, Control T. We'll do a width swap and then a height swap now if we have this here and then control J control T we do a height swap and a width swap again we should now have our perfectly sized ROM pie see this one this guy was a little tilting on this side too much not sure what was going on over there but this one is perfect the strategy is with this is you make one perfect side as you saw with that 
and then you duplicate it over because otherwise you run the risk of having one side that's too big or disproportionate from the other side and you don't really want that. So this is top. Paste layer style and that's perfect. Actually it might even be better if we run it at that same ag angle as that one. Now we're at 25 minutes now, but why it might even be better in the future is if you make the rhombi to this specific angle right here, so it all matches up but just a little bit better. But this will be fine for the tutorial. And it's always pretty simple to make if you want to remake it for yourself. So let's put maybe two or three up top. I'll leave it at two for now. We can come back to that in a moment. And then Control J. We'll drag these to the bottom. And put them at about here. And we'll have four of these here. Hello there, it's not the same distance, there we go. So four there, two up top. And we'll name these the bottom. It's the top. That should be fine. Okay, so ROM by left, and then Control J, ROM by Right, control T, swap the width, check mark, drag this over, perfect. And let me pause real quick and see if I have any ideas as to what we could do with this blue area to give it a little bit more pop. Cool, so something came to mind and that was to add a glass texture right here. So I go in ahead and drop that down name this the glass and control J and we're going to copy it to the other side width drag that over and we have glass there as well and then I think that should really do it for this design right here it's pretty simple and it's really applicable to a lot of communities as I mentioned earlier because there's an necessarily indicate any one specific genre though I guess it kind of leans to a more gaming slash tech side but it's really up to you colors are easily swappable and I'll include all the assets used for this in the Google Drive link as usual including this file the only change I'd personally make when you make this yourself or if you choose to download it is swap up these rhombi to match this line right here rather than this random line I did there but yeah, all the assets will be over for download. I'll include the link to a China Cat font download. Thank you so much for watching, and I have another video on screen for another banner tutorial that you might find useful for your community. See ya.